Hey guys, I wanted to hop on here and share my May favourites with you, so let's dive right in. I've got some SLGs, some bags and some sort of beauty. So let's do the bags and stuff first, so that if you're not interested in beauty, you can watch the accessories and then maybe click out or whatever. So bags wise, I've got two favourites this month and everything in this video, by the way, apart from a couple of things, are very new, very recent. And I know some people get cross if you're sharing favourites that are quite new because they're like, oh, how do you know it's going to be a really good long term thing or a favourite? You just know these are just the things that I'm excited to use this month, but none of them are. And with skincare and stuff, you know, you need to see over the long term if you really enjoy it or not but anyway these are my recent favorites and i'm just being honest these are the things that i've been excited to use all month so favorite bag without fail for a long time um is this one this is the Saint Laurent college bag in the medium size mine is in the gray or you know the asphalt color sorry my lips are feeling really dry mm. because i've been talking and i'm wearing lipstick and it just grrr. Um, yeah, I love it. I just, I wanted a bag for the longest time with a little top handle, but with that flexibility of a long strap. And this just feels, a f this is a fun bag to carry um, because you can just grab it by the little top handle, but you can sling it over the shoulder. I can wear it crossbody, but only just, but none of this takes away from the beauty of the bag. I love Chevron. I just wanted to try another piece from this brand. I have a black kind of quite formal looking little grab bag if you will or, or it's not a tote um, and i wanted a fun kind of casual bag and i just love it it's light i love the gunmetal hardware i love the pocket i can put my phone in the back i love the magnet it's very like easy to open and close i love that there's a bit of organization if you like the pochette mati you will really love this bag but the only thing to bear in mind is that this doesn't hold as much as the pochette mati. That bag is like a TARDIS and it really opens out. It's very flexible. Whereas this bag, um, you've got a nice generous pocket here, but this is really tight. This little zipper section and close to useless. And this section, the back's not as big as the section at the front. But I've learned, you'll see when I show you my new favourite SLGs, that I've just learned to pack the bag quite minimally. I don't use things like a mini pochette or anything like that in here because it just takes up too much space. You can, but you have to then not have other things. So I've just found ways to pack this that I really enjoy. And I go quite compact these days anyway, unless I've got the kids with me and that's what the next bag's about. But I just love this. It's the bag that I've wanted to use. Like every time I've gone out for dinner, every time I've gone to meet a friend, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna use my new bag. And very unusually, I got this bag and I literally you packed my stuff in it that day, whereas normally I sit on the fence and I'm an hour, oh, am I going to keep it? Packed it with my stuff that day and didn't switch out of it for eight days, which is literally never heard of for me, even when I've got like a new Chanel bag. It's fun. It's easy. The price point is not bad for a high end le full leather bag. And I just love grey. And my only other grey bag is a massive Balenciaga bag. So... This is the perfect partner to that because it's quite compact. This is not a mini bag. It's definitely a small bag. So don't let the name medium college bag fool you. I don't really feel this is a medium bag. This is quite a small bag. But for me, it holds my essentials plus a few extra bits. And I really enjoyed using it. Um, it's just fun. You'll see when you watch my friend Andrew's video um, where she she's done a couple of videos on it now. I think it's appeared in a kind of reveal and then maybe mentioned in another video, you can see her enthusiasm as well. It's just fun. I think bags that have a grab handle and a long strap are just so versatile. It's awesome. My other favorite bag at the moment is my Longchamp Le Pliage Tote. I've had these before. I more recently had a black one, but it was looking a bit sad. The black had started to fade a little bit and the corners were really, because it's got like origami, folded corners they were quite frayed and there was almost a little hole so I just decided to donate that one and get a new fresh color and I've always liked the khaki I think it looks very classic and neutral it goes really nice with the tan leather trim and I thought it'd be great for summer I don't always want to use a leather or a high-end bag um this all week half term has been packed up with the kids stuff I've been using it used it today but I've taken some things out but you can see in there I've got one of those Samorga organizers in there I didn't buy it specifically for this I bought it for my 
Deauville tote, which is right there, but it didn't end up really working in that one because it's a bit small, there's a lot of gaps, but it works perfectly in this to organize things and to you know, have water bottles and sun cream in sort of slots so they're not just rolling around. It's just so practical and the price point is such a classic bag. I think a lot of people who love designer bags, sometimes they only have one non-expensive bag and it's this one. Um, this is under £100 and it's just great quality and classic and very functional. So I've been loving that. SLGs. I have never been so excited about some SLGs as these. I don't know why. I bought them all separately. I just kept adding. And now I have this trio. It is just, I was going to say lit, but I'm way too old to say that. <laughs> it's just perfect. So I'll do it in the order that I got them. This is my new clay. It's so cute. It's the Damier Graffite clay. So it's got the silver hardware. I have one kind of small coin pouch that I love to bits, and that's the round one. But in this collage bag, high grey and grey goes so well. It's the compartments are quite flat inside, and so you need, I think, quite slim SLGs and go a bit compact, and then you maximise the space in that bag. So I thought I'd get this for my coins. And I'm very strict on the one in one out rule, you know that. So I sold the Damier Bean clay to get this because I have an emotional attachment to my monogram clay. And when I looked at them, you know, the brown theme with the monogram and the Damier Bean, I thought this is a much more useful addition to my SLGs. I don't have a lot of SLGs with silver hardware. So I got this one and sold one. So it was one in one out. And then I thought I would also like to get the key holder to have like a little bit of a matchy moment. So I sold my damn European key holder. I was just bored of it. There's nothing wrong with it, it's classic, but it was just showing some wear and tear and I really like Louis Vuitton items with silver hardware. So I got this again, I got the six key. I've had the four before in the epi leather. I gave that to my daughter. I just prefer the function of the six key. It's not much bigger, but it can hold my car fob either out or inside. And I also have my gym card or my driver's license or both behind there so I don't forget them. And I just feel it's more chic because my car fobs have always been, I don't know, maybe some of them aren't, but um, oh, there's a loop sticking out. My car fobs have always been silver and I just think that that looks better silver and silver tonal than gold hardware. So I am loving those two, like really excited. And then I got this idea, excuse me, I just dropped something. And I got this idea of getting a card holder and I really sat on the fence for a few weeks and then the one that I decided I wanted was out of stock online. Phoned a couple of stores that had it, but they weren't keen to ship it to me. They said they could hold it and I would have to go and get it. And I was just like, it's a card holder. I'm not doing that. So I waited and stalked the website and it came back in stock. So the one that I chose is the Monogram Eclipse. Now, all three of these products are officially men's products from Louis Vuitton, but I almost think that makes it even cooler. Like less girls have it and it's just a bit more understated and very clean I think without the warm brown tones I just really like them and the reason I got this was that I didn't want all three exactly the same but it's still the same color scheme but mainly because it's a bit bigger it's got two slots on either side so it just holds a bit more the standard monogram card holder the one that you can get in the mono line mon mono line has got one slot on each side and then the bit in the middle and I just thought I would end up forcing too many cards into each slot. And this one holds plenty. I have got three, I've got my gym card, two or three kind of um, points cards that I use on a weekly basis and my payment card. My driving license is in with the car keys. And I've had up to, I've had several bills in there. There are none now because I've used all my money. <laughs> um, I really like it. It's just really simple. You get one LV there and then just the pattern on the back. It's just so lovely. So thin. It's great in the very slim pockets in that collage bag. And I'm just loving these three SLGs. They've given me a real falling back in love with Louis Vuitton moment. Um, but I kind of, yeah, that's for another day. But I've there's things that are kind of key or basic or staple, whatever you want to call it, pieces that I love from Louis Vuitton. And all of their kind of new, super expensive leather, shishi bags, not my thing. So that's the bags and accessories. And let's go on to the beauty. And I'm going to, I actually have got a short list in front of me. And I've realised the video is going to be too long. So I'm going to zone in on the things that I have really loved. So let's do body first. So obviously, 
finally we're getting some consistently warmer weather here in the UK so I've been back to tanning I'm going to be honest I swear every year that I'm going to tan all year round and I don't so in the last like six weeks I've been tanning again just my legs because they just are lighter than the rest of me and I have carried on using the Saint Tropez Purity Self Tan this is the for me the best tan I've ever used it's a light glow that's not too yellow not too orange so it's it's light but it's just a lovely tone and I find it easy to do without making mistakes I now use the Saint Tropez mitt without fail I never just use my hands and I feel like going you know and buffing I don't get streaks or weird areas and if I feel like one leg is like a little bit darker than the other leg because I've used a bit more the next day I can just even it out and I just they, my legs just look glowing and healthier and it lasts ages it's, it's 30 pounds for this size but i noticed recently in boots because i bought a backup that there were like an offer where there was a bit of money off so the scent of it it doesn't smell like fake tan and i mean a lot of fake tans make that claim and then they do smell like fake tan this doesn't smell like fake tan it is so nice another thing that i have to go on about again this is not such a new favorite like this is an old favorite this is an old favorite but but the bags and stuff were new um the copery coconut oil deodorant i love this it's not an antiperspirant but i wash really often most days now i probably have two showers um because i'm exercising and stuff and i just think that it's better to just wash the underarm more often and use a light deodorant rather than antiperspirant which completely blocks all the pores and stops you sweating there and they all contain all conventional deodorants without fail contain aluminium and it's up to you whether you think that there is a risk or you know whatever there's various suggestions or evidence out there i haven't really looked into it but there's some links with the aluminium in deodorants and breast cancer some people say so being a woman and a mum of daughters, I've just wanted to make that switch. And my underarm area is in a lot better condition from shaving and all the rest of it, like because this is really hydrating. So I love it. It's like a solid coconut oil type thing. And I find that it does stop you smelling funky. If you have a really heavy workout and come home, you need a shower, like you will smell, you will be sweaty. But for daily life, this is plenty couple of nice body products from Victoria's Secret we went there a couple of times in the last month to get undies and various things for my daughter and I wanted this I think probably like two months ago like was it the end of April I went in and got this you know I love that lavender this kind of color fleece and I saw these so this is the cocoa wash this is a moisturizing coconut body wash that they used to do but they've reformulated it, it used to be really runny and everyone complained that it came out like a milk so that you just poured half of it down the plug hole well they've reformulated it now and it's really moisturizing and has a delicious mild coconut scent and then this which is so cozy I love cozy bedtimey smelling things this is the coconut oil cocoa sleep and it's got some added lavender and it's just light it's not like a greasy heavy cream it's just a nice light lotion and I massage it in as part of my bedtime routine and it helps me settle down for the night because I'm quite restless I'm not fully insomniac but I find I don't fall asleep quickly my husband goes like that and I end up looking at my phone and reading and fiddling about and listening to the radio for ages but this is just nice as part of a bedtime routine and it's stopping my legs from being too dry so that I don't get patchy tan really enjoying the um Laneige eye sleeping mask but I'm not using it as a night thing I need something more anti-aging and more full-on and hydrating at night I'm using this under my eyes in the morning because it is very kind of caffeine -y, cooling gel tightening it's got like a ceramic ball on the end and I rub that under my eye area in the morning and it really tightens I was using the um origins one but i think this is more effective and if you put it in the fridge so i go down and get a coffee and get this out of the fridge and whack it on and it's just um, it's really good and it's about 25 pounds on amazon i'm whizzing through these body favorite another body favorite so cheap and basic but i get you know when when spring rolls around put it this way i'm not sort of spring sandal ready so i've gone back to having regular pedicures once or twice a month and with this my feet are in great shape so this is the cracked heel repair balm by ccs and my friend is a trained foot person now is it i get i get mixed up because sometimes people call it podiatry some people call it chiropody but she's done the full foot health degree 
So she's now going to be like, I don't know, running clinics to do foot care on people. So there's a lot of medical knowledge in there. Um, and she said, this is the best. It's got very high levels of the urea and lactic acid, which break down those cracks. I actually get like vertical cracks in my heels. And if I put this on five nights a week out of seven, then it completely keeps them at bay. You've just got to keep up with buffing, exfoliating and using this and your feet will be really smooth. So this is great and it's under like four pounds from Boots. I think that's all of the body stuff. And then one mask that I'm really loving, I love sheet masks. I've tried super expensive sheet masks. I've tried ultra cheap sheet masks. I think the sweet spot for me is in the middle. So because you use it like it's a one-time thing, it's not something you use all the time. I think if you buy like, the SK2 sheet masks, they feel really luxurious, but I've never seen you know any long-term benefits from it. This one, I don't know how much they are. I think you can either get a pack, or did I buy this as a single? I can't remember, there are two. This is the collagen one, and I used it last night, and my skin felt so plumped and lovely in the morning, because I put it on at bedtime and then listened to a podcast or two. So it was on for a good half an hour. And then I took it off and I rubbed in all the excess into my skin and my skin was so nice and hydrated and plumped in the morning. There is another one which is a kind of a glycolic one, but to me I've already got products with glycolic, more kind of acid exfoliation things, so I'd rather have more hydrating plumping ones and I just really like this by Pixie. Um, you can get Pixie now, God knows everywhere, like Boots, Marks and Spencers, just so many places. So check it out, it's got peptides, collagen, omega oils, youth infusion, sheet mask, and it's a good mask, it's big enough. I don't feel like I have to, you know, some of them you pull them over your ears and then they like break because I've really got a wide face here. It doesn't, it's it's like a cloth one, so it doesn't like try and peel off or anything. I feel like it goes everywhere on the face and there's plenty of the serum so that you have got a nice bit to rub in at the end. I think it's about, I think they're about eight pounds each, but I'll maybe find out and put the price in the description box for you. I will do that. Okay, a couple of makeup things, not many, um, because I'm gonna do a review of, this is all of the makeup that I've bought since around Easter. So I thought I would talk through the highs and the lows, like my first impressions of things. So I'm just gonna talk about these very briefly, but my two favorite like skin or base products this month have been, the Dior Capture Dream Skin Cushion Foundation, which I just love it. I'm not wearing it today, I'm wearing something a bit more full coverage, but I, oh my gosh, I just love it so much. Um, there's the actual cushion, I'm shade 20. Um, I could probably use a 25 in summer, so I might get a different one. It is 65 pounds, but you do get a spare um, refill in the box, which I didn't realize when I bought it, and then I was like, oh, that's good. Um, it's just very, very, it's got SPF 50, it's sheer, but it just blends so nice and it makes you look really healthy and glowy, but without looking like you're wearing too much makeup, which is my perfect sort of thing. I don't tend to go for heavy coverage. And then if you need, because this doesn't really cover anything, it just kind of unifies and brings your skin tone together. I just go into certain areas that I need to, like my brown spots and under my eyes and conceal, and I just look really healthy and glowing. So... You will hear me on my soapbox talking about coverage all the time because I find most of my friends as they get older either give up on makeup altogether or they are very set in their ways. I can think of eight, nine, ten women that I know who are my age or older and they are using like really full coverage, really full coverage foundations like Double Wear, that's very popular and other ones which when you look at their skin up close you can just see foundation and I think it's I don't think it's necessarily the most flattering thing I understand people get really comfortable doing that but I think sheer things like this and then concealing where you need it make you look more glowy more youthful and that's just my opinion so I'm absolutely loving this and the SPF 50 is great if you've forgotten to put your SPF on with your skincare and then in similar theme you know glow rather than matte 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 um, is this um, new Accomplice powder by Marc Jacobs. It is a translucent, well, they do other shades, but this is the translucent shade 50. I think it's quite neutral and translucent. And it is a setting powder and it's just, you can see in the pan, it's not shimmery, there's no sparkle, but it's got a slight satin or pearl um, effect so that it doesn't look flat. So if you've done like a glowy, I've got quite a bit of shine coming through now 
and if I put this on, well I will, I'll do a little bit of a top up because I haven't touched up my makeup for a couple of hours and I'll just go under the eyes. My chin is where makeup tends to break up, my nose can get a bit, like my makeup sinks into my pores and looks a bit dodgy, basically everywhere. Can you see I haven't gone um, super matte, there's still a glow, but I can see that it's just brought everything together that's starting to look a bit worn out and, you know, smudgy or whatever, and just it's just refreshed my makeup, but I don't look in any way cakey or flat, and this is just so cool, this brush that lives in the lid. Awesome, so I'm really loving that, and it feels really like velvety and lovely, and it sets under the eyes, but it just never cakes or makes what you've done there to brighten like sometimes when you powder you can ruin that glow and then the test for me is that if I do this so that I smile and all my lines it doesn't sit in them or make them look worse so I love that powder and then the last two things are lip things I was really disappointed I bought the Clinique the new launch they did some extra moisture surge products and I bought the lip hydro plump treatment which was recommended by a Clinique lady to put a thick layer on at night as a mask. And I've done that a few nights and I weirdly think it's dried my lips out, like my lips react to it. And the clinic is notorious for using mineral oils instead of high grade natural botanical oils in their products. They use mineral oils in lots of their things, which I just don't really understand because it's such a cheap ingredient and their products are premium price point. But I think this has got mineral oil in it, which is why it feels just like Vaseline to me and does about as much as Vaseline and I didn't get any plumping or any ongoing moisturization. So I was a bit gutted. So instead I tried this because that was the other one on my kind of wish list. And this is amazing. This is the Fenty Pro Kisser Luscious Lip Balm. So it's a very sheer lip balm that just gives you a lovely shine. It's on a doe foot and it looks, I'll put some over my lipstick now. It makes you just look like your lips just look so shiny and moisturized and plumped and lush look at that love it and then the last thing is obviously you need to prep your lips if your lips are already really dry do it using lip balm won't do anything about the bits that are coming away so i love lip exfoliating you could probably do the same thing with a hot flannel and rub over the lips but i do like a lip scrub and they brought this out like together so i thought in for a penny and this is the lip loving scrub stick so they're both in the pro kisser range and you can see it's got visible scrubby bits in it but also when i use it i think there are micro particles so it feels like a very fine face scrub and i just massage it on with my ring finger wipe it away and that and that together literally i couldn't stop touching my lips the other day i thought oh my god my lips haven't felt in that good condition for ages so those were my favorites my next video is going to be a comparison between the YSL and that, which is my pochette Matisse. I've got some thoughts, but I just need to organise them and take measurements maybe and like do all the technical stuff and maybe do a list of like pros and cons before I present it to you so that it's just really focused and a very information-y video because when I bought the college bag, which I will show you one more time, I suspected I'd like it because it's got a very similar structure and layout to the pochette Matisse. But I really wanted a comparison, like what can you fit in them and, and all the rest of it. And there were no side by side comparisons that I found. So I thought that'd be useful for you guys. So that'll be my next video. I hope you have a great weekend and a great month of June and I'll see you next time. Bye.